how to combine weightlifting and Mai Tai. Hi everyone, Dan back here from the Geek Physique for another video. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. Who is this video for? It's for the guy who wants to look good in and out of his clothes, but also wants to de develop the skill of Mai Tai or another martial art if you wish. It's probably not for someone who actually is going to go and compete in either, you know, bodybuilding or Mai Tai itself. I feel like it would be wrong of me to be speaking about that just because I don't currently compete. I will touch on that a little bit at the end though, just to point you in the right direction. So if you do want to look good in and out of your clothes and you want to develop the skill of Mai Tai, you first want to figure out what is your priority. Is it that you, uh, Mai Tai is your main priority and you're trying to lift to support that and to, you know, look good at, uh, in and out of your clothes? Or are you trying to lift to look better and Mai Tai is just something you do kind of barely for fun? Or is it somewhere in the middle and a mixture of those? You really need to get clear because that will help you understand if your training is suitable based on your goals. If you're feeling like you're not getting much better at my time, you've been trying to do this and you're, you're always sore from your lifting, then your, pri your training is not aligned to what your priorities are. And vice versa, if you feel like your body hasn't really made any significant improvements, but your Mai Tai is getting a lot better, which of course you're going to get more shredded doing Mai Tai and you are going to get improve your physique in some ways. But if it's not getting the shape that you'd like in specific areas, then again, your, your training is not aligned to your priority, your priorities. So make sure you ask yourself that question, be honest with yourself, be clear and keep to it. Okay, I can't stress that enough. You want to test based on what your priority are, priorities are for, a, for at least four weeks minimum to see how you react to that kind of setup. The next point, find a coach, especially for Mai Tai or the martial art you're trying to practice. I've gone through periods of my life where I didn't go to a proper class or coach and it's not the same. It is not the same. I've trained uh, you know, I do bag sessions, I do pad sessions with other friends who train and those are great and you can uh, improve with each other and you can improve when you're on a bag if you're, you've got the right intention there. But nothing will be having a proper coach going to a proper class and actually doing some kind of sparring or if it's, you know, BJJ rolling, some kind of um, way of testing your actual skill if it's actually a priority for you to get better at the skill, I think you really need to test it for real rather than, you know, just doing it purely for fun without re any real idea of how good you are. So I think it's essential to have a coach for Mai Tai or a martial art or go to a class even um, if you actually want to get better at it. When it comes to your physique, I don't think it's essential. Even though I'm a coach and we coach guys to help them get to their goals in under three hours a week of training without a strict diet or motivation, that is what we do. And if you need help with that, we run a free seven day challenge. The link to that is in our description via our link tree link. It's the first link on our link tree. So you can click that if you really need help um, on that journey. And we have our paid coaching as well but I still don't think it's essential for you. When it comes to Mai Tai and um, learning martial art, I think it is. I wanna be clear about that. Next, how to actually balance the two. So I'm gonna talk about a, a, a lot about my own training to give you an idea of how you could go about doing this yourself. Now, it really depends on how many days a week you have to train. I actually do six sessions a week across five days at the moment. So I'll give you an idea of what that looks like. Usually four to five days, but I'll give you um, the breakdown. So, mon uh, so and for me, I would say my priorities are pretty much an even split, okay? So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I do a full body and each full body has a focus. So Monday's focus is uh, and actually, 
sorry, the, the, the lifting plan I, I've designed for myself is an arms and legs focus because those are the areas I'm trying to improve on as a priority. With the other um, areas, just kind of improving on more of the back burner. But each area still has, each workout, sorry, still has a breakdown between like my pushing, my legs and my pulling. Okay, so Monday is full body push with the arms focus and uh, legs focus. Uh, Wednesday is the hip, like the day with the most leg volume, still with a little bit of upper body and arms. And then Friday is um, a lot of my pulling volume, still with a little bit of legs, little bit of pushing and still arms as well, okay? Now, uh, ask me a com leave me a comment below if you want to learn more, uh, ask me or, or dig into, you know, that's not the right way to train for your goals, you know. If you want to talk a bit more about that, I can talk about my, my training plan in another video more closely in terms of just the lifting. But just to talk about how I combine it with the Mai Tai, so I lift Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the mornings. Monday evening, I go to my Mai Tai class and I'm going to shout out the class I'm going to at the, mo at the moment. It's called the Lloyd Heavens Boxing Academy. It's like a, a box gym, like a small box gym. He has it in, um, so I live in Northwest London. It's based out of uh, Padd Paddington Youth uh, center, I think, is the play, is the building. If you put that in Youth Club, Paddington Youth Club, it will come up. Uh, but he's an amazing coach. He specialises in Mai Tai and boxing. He has he works with multiple people that do compete at different levels. He did compete himself at different levels, and he is one of the best coaches I've ever worked with. And the class is so focused around getting better at Mai Tai rather than doing a bunch of push ups and sit ups and squats. Some of that is in there for conditioning but it's so focused on the skill of getting better at Mai Tai. And I wanna to touch on this point, although this video is about combining the two, actually this is important about when it comes to combining the two, you don't want to find a class where, if you can help it, where there's so much body conditioning and exercise other than the actual sport itself because you're already doing that in your lifting sessions. You're already doing push-ups or, or some kind of horizontal push. You're already doing your squats, probably even with a barbell on weight. You're already doing pull-ups or something, or you're maybe even training your abs as well. So you don't probably need extra work on those areas in your class. What you wanna be there for is training Mai Tai. I can't stress that enough. And I'm so glad I found a class where I didn't have to actually tell the teacher, I do my own SNC, I don't need to be doing this. Now, we still do a little bit, like a small circuit at the end, but I've been to classes where half the class is like these body weight circuits and kettlebell circuits, and that stuff is great if you don't exercise or don't do anything, and it appeals to the wider public, but you want to find more of a purist class, I think, where the focus is on actually getting better at the sport. Okay, that will definitely help your recovery and help you manage your volume better, which I'll come on to after. But going back to my plan and how I balance things, so Monday, lift in the morning, my time in the evening, I then take Tuesday off. The reason being is going to a full class, it's usually about an hour to an hour and a half. It is intense. If you've never done a proper class and found an actually really good class or coach, and you've only ever lifted before, it's a different feeling for sure. It's a different kind of feeling. You're going to feel like you're in a car crash probably the next morning, the first time you do it. And that will slowly, you'll get slowly more and more used to it. Um, but take Tuesday completely off. I go for a walk, uh, but that's about it. Make sure I replenish and eat really well, you know, really replenish my glycogen, obviously plenty of protein, but I focus on carbs. Carbs are really key because it is your primary energy source. I know not everyone likes to eat carbs and there's a big debate about that online, but for me personally, I think it is really important. It helps you fuel all these different workouts you could be doing. So Tuesday off, Wednesday, I usually lift in the morning. Now, maybe I'll do a pad session or a bag session in the evening, okay? But usually, I'll then do that on the Thursday. I'll then lift on the Friday again. And then on the Saturday, I'll do a bag or pad session again. Now, I want to uh, touch on 
the rest of the sessions, the way, the reason they're like that. If my schedule permitted me to, I would probably just do three, two a days, if I'm being quite honest. The reason being, I think the rest day in between actually works really well. And someone else, um, I, I got this originally from Mike Isretel from Res Renaissance Periodization, and he competes in bodybuilding and compete and jujitsu. He doesn't do both at the same time, but he, well, he does train both at the same time, but he doesn't prioritize both at the same time because he's doing both at such a high level. But I got this idea from him because it really helps you actually recover and get better, right? Which I will come uh, well, no, we're kind of talking about it all together. So when I when I put in the sections for this video, it's going to be, um, I'll break it down in, in a way that makes sense if you want to go through the chapters. But if I my schedule permitted me every week, I would just say two a days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and that way you're training each and three times a week. And I'm already getting much better at Mai Tai and my physique has really improved doing this training still, even as much as when I was prioritizing my physique more than my tie, which is really interesting, I, I found. Um, but what uh, is key here for me is the scheduling, right? Like I said to you before, you want to work out how many days you have to train. Now, because I can't always train in the evenings, you know, I have a social life, I have my relationship, I want to see my family, my friends, all these things, I have two businesses to run, etc, etc. For me, the sessions from Wednesday to Saturday are all within my control. They're not, the, the, the intensity is not outsourced to somewhere, someone else. Whereas, if you could do two a days and commit to them, you could probably more than likely do a class each evening if you could do that. So if you did Monday lifting or, or your class in the morning and then lifting in the evening, what I'm saying is you then get enough time to recover because the classes can be super intense. And I know that I was speaking to guys at my the class I go to and they were saying they train three to four times a week just doing dedic you know, my, dedicated Mai Tai or boxing training and that's more than enough for them to get really good and actually compete. So... Um, they recovery is super important here. Now, when it comes to structuring your sessions, okay, I will talk about volume separately now, actually. Um, it's really important for your lifting to start from your minimum effective volume. What does that mean? What that means is what amount of sets minimum not you've watched some workout on youtube of some guy that looks jacked and may or may not be taking something and you think well i should probably do his workout because he looks more jacked than dan and so i'm going to listen to him more like think about it logically guys you're doing a lot more training you're doing a sport that could be putting a lot more an impact sport that is going to require you to recover even more so than if you were just lifting so just taking your emotions out of it, you think about it logically, you probably want to start small and build up. And any um, boxing coach worth their salt that I follow on social media says the same about, about professional boxers or fighters, that when they get into training camp, if they've had a long layoff, they shouldn't go, like, go in like a bull in a china shop. They should go in slow and steady and build it up. It's the same thing with this, especially when you're. this is the first time you're combining the two. I would... Um, focus on starting with two to three days a week for both of them, okay? And doing full bodies for your lifting and then dedicated sessions for your Mai Tai. That would be my personal preference. And I've tried doing splits where you do maybe, I did like upper lower for a while um, and I've done it as well. But with the recovery, I think it really helps. But going back to the volume, I'll come back to the recovery, but going back to the volume, Minimum effective volume is your sets per muscle group per week, the minimum amount it, it takes to make a change. So the range, I'm going to give you a very general range. I'm not going to go into every muscle group. Renaissance Periodization has a, has a video per muscle group, so I, I give them a big shout out because they helped me so much on my journey with this stuff because I kept just following random workouts online. You're like, why is it that many sets? And no one can tell you why. Um, 
And, you know, I've done, I, I did my PT qualification, all of that. And even the stuff you learn in your PT qualification doesn't always logically break everything down to this level. But once you understand it, it really makes sense. It's about 10 to 20 sets per week per muscle group, about that. Now it can be more than 20 for some muscle groups. It could be less than 10 for some muscle groups. Like hamstrings, for example, very fast twitch for most people can actually benefit from like, for me, I can start my mesocycle, my block of training, a plan of training. I can start that with like five sets per week and make progress, see visible changes in my hamstrings, get sore, right? And you might think that's not a lot, but this is quality and quantity, guys. I'm not doing fast reps. I'm doing slow, controlled reps, controlling the eccentric, exploding up on the concentric, but still of control, pausing in the bottom part of the lift in the full stretch. Again, if you want to look good in and out of your in and out of your clothes, guys, we're not here trying to power lift, right? This is if you want to combine looking better in and out of your clothes, like I said at the start, and actually getting better at the sport. So, um, the lifting is very much geared towards hypertrophy and hypertrophy is going to be done in that fashion, right? Not fast reps. So um, quality is as important as quantity. And for some muscle groups, you just don't need that much. But the general range to go for is 10 to 20 sets. So I would advise you all start at 10 sets at most at the beginning of your journey with this. Even if you've been doing more, that's more than enough to at least maintain your current progress and probably still make progress, right? You might think, yeah, but I've been doing 16 for all my body parts. But again, you're introducing another training stimulus. You wanna be smart about this. You don't wanna injure yourself and then not be able to train at all, right? So volume is key. Like I said before in how to balance the two of them and my own training, when it comes to how many Mai Tai sessions you do, whether you're doing them in the actual class or yourself, if you're doing them yourself, you can very much control the volume and intensity. You can say, I'm gonna do this many rounds on the bag for this long. I'm gonna do this many rounds of skipping for this long. I'm gonna do this many rounds of shadow boxing for this long, right? Or drills or whatever it is. When it's a class, it could chop and change and the, and the teacher and who you're doing the class with is gonna determine that to a large extent. So that's why when it comes to the days you have to train and, and finding your recovery, I would say you wanna do a minimum of at least one dedicated class a week with a coach. If you can do more then great, but to still improve, you want to do structured training sessions around getting better at Mai Tai. So for me, that is pad work, bag work, uh, shadow boxing, those are the priority because that's sport specific. Some other things that can supplement it, it supp supplement it are like things like footwork drills or skipping to build up the conditioning in your calves because that bounce, that rhythm, uh, that motion as, as, a, as my current coach would call it. Um, you want to keep that good motion. You really need to condition your, um, uh, your calves, your soleus, not just your gastroc, which is the big meaty part of your calf that you do when you do like a lot of like standing calf raises, but your soleus more trained when you've got bent leg, but when you're doing like skipping things like that, um, condition that up, it's a good idea, but you can control the amount you do. Now, what I have been doing is I like to do at least three rounds in the bag, okay? I like to do a few rounds, you know, at least one to three round shadow boxing, okay? And same with my skipping, right? Now the bag is interchangeable with pads. That's the current format I do for my own Mai Tai training. And I do a dynamic stretching routine to warm up and I do a static stretching routine to cool down. And, and that gives you an idea of how much training, the volume you can start off with. Now, if that's too much, just do less rounds on the bag or for not as long. So currently I do about three minute rounds on my pads or my bag sessions. You can start with two minutes. You can even start with one minute, but don't do anything with less than one minute. By the time you start the clock, it's gonna end, right? But constantly moving, constantly working on your uh, technique and combinations and things like that. Recovery. Now, I've already touched upon this, but I'm just going to kind of summarize recovery, recovery in one point. You want to make sure, and this is crucial, depending on your schedule, I can't give you a, you have to take this many days off 
Uh, well, I will say that you should probably take at least one day off a week, but uh, of everything. Um, but I would have recovery in between each type of specific training. So between your li dedicated lifting, I would have a day's recovery if you're doing your full bodies. And between your Mai Tai sessions, I think it's good to have a day's recovery between those because you're recovering from that specific stimulus, uh, which I think is key. The other thing which is important for recovery is your performance is a really good indicator of how well you've recovered. If you're still, if your numbers are still going up in the gym and you still have energy to push in your lifting and your Mai Tai is getting better, you know you're on the right track. And here's a really cool thing you can do with your recovery and volume. And something I've, I've learned from Renaissance Periodization, it's something that I do with my own training, it's something that we do with our clients, is you adapt your volume and your stimulus based on how well you recover. That's what you call auto-regulation, which is a really fancy way of saying, well, why does Tom, Dick or Harry on YouTube, even if they are jacked to the gills, do 16 sets, right? They've found a volume that works for them. Now, you can keep the same volume. You don't have to add sets per week. It is another element of complexity, but it allows you to control the stimulus. So if you start off your training block, your training plan, not needing a lot to get better, you why not push it and do a bit more? Why not do more rounds of of um, on the bag or, or skipping or longer rounds, right? like you add reps and weight in the gym, which is actually increasing your volume as well. But in the gym, what if you add an extra set, right? That is going to essentially uh, influence how much gains you get in both areas. But you also want to uh, find that balance of not pushing too far too soon, because eventually you're gonna be doing so much training, you'll probably have to take a deload at some point, recover, a deload is just like an easier week of training. It's not like you don't train. You can sometimes take some time off, right? I think it's good for everyone to maybe take a week or two. You have a holiday or something, but uh, a deload is still works really well where you do like light training for a week or two and you really back away from at least one or both of them and get, allow your body to, a chance to recover. So it's like you start a training block, both balancing the two of them or doing one slightly more than the other making sure you're recovering by uh, one of the best indicators is your performance and your sleep. Are you sleeping well? Are you performing better in your lifting sessions, in your Mai Tai sessions? Are you getting better at both of them? Keep adding to it. If you feel like you're getting better and you can take more, take more, take more, recover and just keep repeating that process over time. And that gives you a really good way to structure how much you should be doing in terms of your volume and also your how to tell if you're recovering. I think I've covered everything before I go on to my last point. So I just want to go back over my notes, guys. So we've talked about obviously who the video is for. We've talked about what your priority should be. I mentioned you should definitely find a coach for your Mai Tai. And if you need a coach for getting into better shape, then uh, yours truly. Uh, click the link in the description if you want to get started on our free seven day challenge. You can do that. Um, how to balance the true, I went uh, balance the two, I went through my own training plan and then I broke down volume and recovery a bit more specifically. And I wanna just re-emphasize, start small with this stuff and then build up. I actually just wanna talk about one final point, why I do my training the way I do it before I go into the last point, the, the closing point of the video. I've experimented with doing upper body splits, right? Um, I've only ever had a max five to six days a week to train, okay? Because I do want a life as well, you know? Uh, and maybe training is all that is your main focus and you can train, you know, six or even seven days a week. But I prefer to have at least one day's of rest a week to actually recover. But I just prefer full bodies for this kind of training where you're balancing the two. Now, if lifting is more of a priority for you and you're just kind of doing my type of fun, it's not as much of a priority. Maybe you could just do it once a week to two times a week and do like upper lower split. That's what I'd recommend. Um, but if you... And if you want my type to be your priority, I'd just do two full bodies a week and maybe three days a week my type. But 
Uh, and that's if you know you've got about five days a week to train, sometimes doing two a days. You can kind of figure out what I mean there. And you can ask me questions in the comments if you're like, I have this many days a week to train. I have this schedule. How should I structure my training, Dan? We could talk about that, but where I can really help you in that area is giving you a specific lifting plan to complement your Mai Tai or boxing or martial art of any kind to do just what I'm explaining in this video, okay? Alongside the coach or class you go to. Um, but I've just found that I'm getting so much better at Mai Tai I've ever, that, that I have in a long time and my body's still improving this current style of training. So um, the only other thing is how to structure your lifting days so it doesn't take really long. Um, I'm really getting into the detail here, but why not give you all the value in the in the video? Um, so I'm just going to make my make sure I'm keeping track of my notes here. So uh, why I train the way I do, and then I want to talk about um, no, I think that covers it. I think that covers it. Okay, let's go on to our last point, which is what you should do if you want to compete. So I think you should find a specific coach um, for actual strength and conditioning for the sport, okay? Now, I am going to say that I could put together a plan for you guys to do that, but there are better people out there and I'm happy to say that, okay? What my specialty is, is helping guys who don't have a lot of time, get to their goals, improve their uh, the way they look in and out of their clo clothes without a strict diet and without needing motivation either. That is my current specialty. But my own training, it looks a lot like that because the other thing I'm busy doing is doing Mai Tai, right? But my Mai Tai training is heavily influenced by the class I go to once a week, the coach I work with. And then I adapt and take things from that and practice it in my own bag sessions and pad sessions that I do with another box, uh, person who used to box at my local gym and other people who I know who box and practice these things. So we can help each other get better, but I structure that training based on what I've learned. If you want to compete, you want to have specialized training throughout the entire week tailored to what you're trying to compete in. So if it's bodybuilding, you probably want to do the minimum amount required for Mai Tai and, and control it because it's very much gonna in, impede your recovery for bodybuilding and vice versa. If you want to get better at Mai Tai and you want to lift for Mai Tai, because you can't really do Mai Tai for bodybuilding, right? But you can lift specifically for Mai Tai. You can have specific strength and conditioning training. You probably want a plan and the week to be completely structured to actually set you up to compete. And if I ever choose to compete in future, I would move more to that model, okay? So I hope that's clear for, for you all. I hope it's been helpful. I'm not gonna recap the points because I did just do that before this last point, um, but give it a shot, guys. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions about this. If you don't agree, if you think it's silly, because a lot of people say, you know, you shouldn't bodybuild at the same time as doing Mai Tai or boxing, it's gonna slow you down, it's gonna make you more stiff. And I do think there is some tr truth to that, but I also know the best SNC coaches for people in the UFC do strength training. They may not do as much hypertrophy volume as I personally do, but I'm not competing, right? So that's why I'm saying if you want a bit of both, I think there is a way to do that. And I don't think you should have to just do one or the other just because of people who, do, who only do one or the other are imposing that on you, right? They're saying, well, you shouldn't be lifting weights. Like, why? What if that's what you want to do with your life? What if you just want to look better in and out of your clothes? You want to get better at a specific martial art? Maybe you might compete in one of them one day, but right now you just want to get better at both of them? This is who this video is for, and I hope it has really clarified these points. Um, make sure you uh, click here or here for another video and keep watching. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and uh, leave a comment below if you did have any questions, if you thought this was helpful, if you, or if you disagree for any reason. 
Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.